In this video, what I'm going to do is summarize different scenarios of projectile motion. Because in projectile motion, uh, understanding the backstory is very important to helping you uh, to begin your attack of the problem and to understanding what exactly is going on in each situation. What I've done here is I've summarized projectile motion into basically five different scenarios. And each scenario has its own uh, pluses and minuses. And you need to be able to look at the situation and understand what you're dealing with. And with all kinematics equations that are dealing with acceleration, um, you need three variables to begin solving uh, your situation. In this case with projectile motion, we know that the acceleration in the y direction is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're always going to define our axis as the positive y is going up and the, and the right positive x is going to the right. In this situation with a horizontal launch, you know that the initial y velocity is zero. And that is important. Because that means that the initial velocity, in this case, is simply the x velocity. It's all x at that point. Okay, So that gives you something to work with right there. You already know acceleration. You already know initial velocity. Um, and then from there, you just need a third variable. You can have a, displacement, a negative displacement here. You can have a time. Uh, but from there, that gives you something to work with. And again, this is just a higher level perspective. I'm not going to solve problems right now. I'm just going to give you uh, some strategies to begin to work with these. The next scenario down here is max height. And let's say that you had a situation here where there was an object launched, and it gave you a building. And it said it just gets to the building. And it wants to know uh, what is the, the, the speed when it gets there, what is the height. And so the way that you solve this one, it's simply a mirror of this one. The first one we said, horizontal launch, uh, in that case. In this case, you know that v final y equals 0 meters per second. And don't think that the final speed is 0. It's not. The final speed in that case is simply just the x component. So we say v final x equals v. Um, if we take a look down here, and another thing we can do that's useful in any of these situations, if we have theta and v initial, we can break these up into the components. So when we have a situation like this, we immediately want to resolve v initial velocity into v initial y and v initial x. And furthermore, on this idea, you should be comfortable with interchanging v initial y with v initial sine theta and v initial x with v0 cosine theta. And so these give you some tools to begin working through the problem. The next situation is a really important one, and that is dealing with ground to ground projectile launches. So in this problem, we have a lot of interesting properties to work with with symmetry. And this, this is actually one of the easiest types of problems to work with at, when, we're, when we're looking at projectile motion. So the first thing we're going to look at here is uh, simply some symmetry that we have with the initial speed and the final speed, or the magnitude of the initial velocity and the magnitude of the, initial, the final velocity. Uh, and they, in fact, they are the same. Uh, they're the same exact value. So if I had the final speed here, it's equal to the initial. So that's useful. That's going to be very important for us. Now if we go back to the last situation, we can see that we can break this initial velocity into components, v initial y, v initial x. And we break it in, we say v initial sine theta, and we say v initial cosine theta. And the interesting thing over here is that we have a symmetrical situation that we can use. So when we go over here to our final speed, which we said was equal to our initial speed on this ground to ground launch, the final y component is simply the negative of the initial component. So we already have a, a final component before we even know anything about what's going on over here. Just the fact that it's symmetrical means that this final y is equal to the opposite of the initial y. So that's really nice to work with. The next thing we're going to work with is a situation dealing with the displacement in the y direction. And we notice we're going ground to ground. So what does that mean? That means delta y equals 0. That's another condition that we can use that's very useful. And so finally, another condition that we can use that's symmetrical in this case is if I wanted to find, let's say I wanted to find the time of the flight. And um, we were working with a situation where we wanted to 
just use symmetry involved. Let's say I want to take max height here or half of the flight. Now I want to define t, uh, t of max height. Since it's a symmetrical problem, the t of the max height is simply just one half of the time of the total flight. So you have symmetry here. You could have just used this as a max height problem. You could have used one of these and found the time to that point and doubled it. So the ground to ground situation offers a lot of advantages and you can you can immediately begin to solve a lot of nice problems. When you get into the delta y equation, which is delta y equals v0 t plus 1 half at squared, you notice that you have a quadratic here, but if your delta y is zero, you immediately can factor out a time here and you have already one of the variables eliminated and you don't need to deal with a quadratic in this situation. So it makes that equation a lot easier to work with. And the next and final two situations that I'm going to go into are probably the most difficult ones to work with simply because we don't have symmetrical tricks to work with and um, there's, a, there's a multiple family of solutions depending upon what you want to solve for. And the first one is uh, asymmetric elevated launch. And so in this case, we would have an angle here and it's launched in an angle. And let's say that we want to find um, you know, information about where it lands. In this case, we simply don't have symmetry to work with. So let's say you have the situation, you've launched, you have your angle here, and you have your new angle here, your theta final, let's say this initial, you have your theta final over here. They're definitely not the same. And so in this type of a situation, uh, you're going to have, first of all, your displacement is going to be negative, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. You're going down, and just like we saw, in this, the, even the horizontal launch that we saw the first example, your displacement is negative. Uh, but in this case, uh, when you start dealing with the equation, uh, which we talked about before, delta y equals v0 t plus 1 half at squared, in this case, you are going to get a quadratic equation that you're going to have to solve for with time. Uh, because at any given time, you're going to pass through that point twice. And one of those points is not, is not necessarily zero. So before when we had the ground-to-ground -ground launch, we could just take out one of the t's. So here these types of problems are going to get a little more complex. And so it's very important to pay attention to your components in this case. And so in this situation, it's extremely important to pay attention to your components of the, of the velocity and to write them in terms of VO sine theta and VO cosine theta because more than likely you're going to have to work with these and you could have two unknowns uh, in the beginning and the end with these equations to solve for. And so one of the things to remember in all cases of projectile motion is that the X component never changes, okay? So we know that V initial X equals VO cosine theta. That's the same here. It never changes, okay? So that's important. That, that's a symmetry that's always there. It doesn't matter what case it is. So in these types of situations where you have this asymmetric uh, launches, it's very important to remember that because you can start to get information now about the initial velocity, even from the final. And just remember here that this, this final uh, y velocity has nothing to do with this component. It has nothing to do with the initial. It's completely different. And it's just it's, it's the magnitude of this velocity vector times the sine of theta. They're com two completely different arrows. They're different magnitudes. So there's a lot more work that it, that's involved with these problems. And our fifth and final example is just an asymmetric depressed launch. An asymmetric means, again, that um, I'm launching it here. I'm landing up on some building. But before when we landed on the building, we were at the max height. Okay, Now the max height's occurring somewhere here. And this is, this is something like you would see if a baseball player was hitting a home run up into the stands. And you're going to get a positive delta y in this case. And again, you have no symmetry whatsoever, except for, in this case, uh, you know that the x component never changes. And so just as in the last examples, it's very important to resolve our components in the beginning. Always think of v initial y in terms of this. v initial y is v0 sine theta and V initial X is V0 cosine theta. Always visualize that. Now you do, you can work with this X component as being the same everywhere. So you can say V final X equals V initial X, which is the same as saying V initial cosine theta or V final cosine theta. You can visualize that as any of these four examples. Notice that on the way down, the Y component has not developed as it had before here because it's not, it didn't make it back to the ground. 
Okay, so the y component is just is a shorter in magnitude than it was over here. Okay, uh, but the x component is is, is the same. Um, it's the same as before, but the the y the final y component in this case is going to be v sine theta, and that's a, that's a negative value. When you get your you know you'll get your scalar uh, component will give you a negative value, and so hopefully that just gives you an overall situation now of the five different types of projectile problems you could have. You can have different variants within these even, but at least that gives you a situation and some tools to begin to solve these problems.